represents the Romanian spirit in its most genuine and most dignified form. The son of Moldavian farmers, whose artistic temperament and imagination had its strong, undeniable roots in unspoiled natural beauty, in the very soil and folklore of his native environment, was destined to become a multifaceted musical genius of international fame, one of the significant minds of the 20th century, an artist who succeeded to incorporate Romanian spirituality into worldwide culture. Let us consider, however briefly, the process which led the dreamy peasant boy, son of well-to-do farmers of northern Moldova, to acquire a solid education and a vast, most propitious exposure in its formative years amid the exciting atmosphere of Europe's two cultural capitals, Vienna, then Paris. After graduating at age 11 from the Music Conservatory in Vienna, with the highest distinction of gold medal, and then 
graduating at age 17 with a premier B from the Paris Conservatory, he went on to develop an uncommonly rich and multifaceted activity as a, I repeat, virtuoso violinist, pianist, conductor, composer, and teacher. Really, five men in one. His phenomenal memory was encompassing almost the entire Western music repertoire. Already in Vienna, his schoolmates gave him the nickname the Romanian Mozart. Perhaps his outstanding gift as an interpreter has somewhat overshadowed his reputation as a composer. Of course, his Romanian rap to this. By the way, that, that irks me a little bit when I, whenever I pronounce the name of George Enescu, and if there is any positive reaction, I, I hear, I, the Romanian Rhapsodies. Well, I can tell you from personal knowledge, and this was actually almost irritated. She said, the Romanian Rhapsodies, of course, they are brilliant compositions, and everybody knows, masterfully orchestrated. But they were my sins, my sins of uh, youth. Indeed, he composed them when he was a teenager. He made sensation, and they remained of course, in the repertoire, but to characterize Enescu as a composer of the Romanian Rhapsody is practically an insult. So, let's see. Uh, but on his way to maturity, Enescu decided not to quote anymore from the folklore which he deeply loved and treasured. He continued to draw inspiration from elements of the folklore in a process of, I would say, distilling the folklore in his world. Thus, his later style, indirectly influenced by the spirit of Romanian folklore, was a synthesis of nationality and universality. This process is best illustrated in Enescu's own words, referring to his third sonata for piano and violin, subtitled In the Romanian Folk Character. I must, in parentheses, add, this is a great masterpiece. You don't have to be a musician to enjoy it. If you ever hear it in a concert, it is a piece which once in a great while is being given, even abroad, famous Romanian sonata for piano and violin, which Enescu's uh, era's disciple, Yehudi Menuhin, used to play in an absolutely marvelous way. It is an extraordinary composition. And referring to that, the music critic, Marc Pancherle, again, you are too young to know, but Marc Pancherle was about a half a century ago, one of the leading, if not the leading, French music critic in Paris. Here are his own words. I'm quoting uh, uh, the, the, the words uh, of uh, Enesco, which he transmitted to Persian. In quote, before writing my sonata in Romanian folk characters, in parentheses, all themes are my own. I had to wait for a fusion to take place within myself between the Romanian folklore mode, whose nature is essentially rhapsodic, and my own nature of born symphonist. A long period of organic assimilation was needed to achieve a reconciliation as harmonious as it was in my power between the moment Enescu's extraordinary gift as a violinist. <clears throat> Although Enescu used to blame the violin for robbing him of precious time, which he would rather spend composing, he did enjoy an international career of great status. He possessed an immense vitality, a spiritual force, as well as extreme refinement, 
so that he could totally identify with the music and his interpretations were nothing short of magic for a better word. As for his uh, repertoire, it's thoroughly covered not only the well-known masterworks, but even the so-called class B composers, which were young conservatory students used to call. For instance, music by Spohr, Paderewski, again, not only Bach, Mozart, Beethoven. But in his incomparable renditions, they became unusually convincing. It was a blend of intellect and intuition which defies analysis. I'm talking about his interpretations, his violin. A fascinating power of expression which gave every phrase the right meaning. Listening to his performances was totally absorbing. No wonder that an extraordinary talented child like Yehudi Menuhin was so deeply impressed when he heard Enesco perform that he fervently asked to be taught by no one else. I'm quoting Menuhin's own words. I have never experienced such performances. Menuhin as a child heard an Esco in California and Esco had several tools as a concert violinist in this country. And later, also quoting Menuhin, when I study music, whether as a violinist or a conductor, when I study a score, I feel the illuminating power of this master. Everything I do is Enesco symbolizes for me the absolute. And I must say that I've heard, in fact, I've heard even on our American television, uh, Yehudi Menuhin was not hiding this statement. He was telling them public acknowledging the genius of Enescu. Indeed, Menuhin and Enescu developed a marvelous artistic and human relationship of worldwide. Enescu, I think, is still, is still um, active and lives in Florida. Christian Ferras was a great uh, French violinist. Now, uh, Roman Totenberg lives in Boston, doesn't play anymore. He's in his 90s, but he still remembers his Days with Enesco. Well, what more can one say about Enesco's magnificent piano playing? You know, of course, his violin is violin, super, incomparable violinist, but was he a pianist? That he sometimes accompanied various violinists in the Brahms and Beethoven violin sonatas was quite a real feat. Also, uh, was taught was violin Menuhin. taking a lesson in Paris. And not not somebody called him. Dr. Boudon, Maurice Ramey, the great composer, who was a great friend and admirer of his own. Oh, apologies, etc. Cut the long story long story short. Ramey said, oh, my dear Georges, look, I have my new violin piano sonata here, the manuscript, and tonight I have to give it to the publisher, and I have never heard it. Even. Would you kindly play it with me so I have a, an idea of my own music? Well, it's good. It's good. He's one of the most polite people, I must tell you. He turned to the Menuhin. The little Menuhin was accompanied by his father and said, Would you allow me? Father and son went to the corner and Esco said, said uh, uh, Ravel sat at the piano and Esco took the violin. And they read through the new sonata from the manuscript. When they finished, it's very good. It's all my share. What marvelous music you compose, wonderful pieces. I liked it so much. Let's play it once more. I heard Ravel was enchanted. And so he took the manuscript, the, the music stand with a manuscript. I 
would believe. That was a Christmas memory. Well, and stories and stories. Yes. Well, uh, quickly, uh, as, uh, in the last, uh, in the last year of our stay in Romanian in the 40, so season 45, 46, right after the war, my young Scott husband, we were just married, was the one for one year a member of the Bucharest. George Enesco Philharmonic, uh, uh, it was uh, renamed the George Enesco Philharmonic Orchestra. And one day he came, he came home absolutely transfigured after the rehearsal. What happened? Enesco was conducting the rehearsal today, and it was a great work by Debussy, Fet. There are two, uh, two uh, new age effect, two works for orchestra, wonderful orchestra pieces. It was uh, late, it was noon, the orchestra members were tired, were hungry, and they just couldn't get the results that he wanted. So he said, gentlemen, the rehearsal is finished. He went backstage, and of course my late husband and I had the great, the immense privilege to have made music. someone like you with your incredible enthusiastic spirit that helps to uh, get the rest of the world. I appreciate your remark and indeed in my first year of education that you've got it, I must say regretfully there is an academic uh, audience here. Not one of my students knew, really grown up, grown up college students, not that they didn't know enough about Romania's art or history. They didn't know anything. <laughs> and I wonder, you young people, what can you do about really changing the situation? I think some of the fault, right, probably, is in our own dear country who has not been perhaps aggressive enough in, in transmitting uh, abroad knowledge the way other countries have them. But something must be done because Romania has a lot to offer. I don't have to insist on that. And always had enough to offer. And it has an enormously interesting history in all aspects of art and science. But again, the, no, the international knowledge, unfortunately, is almost non existent. I agree with you. We must, we must do, we must do continuously, and I assure you I do it as much as I can. We must say that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well known in Well. And is it well defined? I don't know about nowadays, but I, I have been educated in Romania. And I must say, I've done my, uh, my uh, um, education up till, in, and including my first um, four uh, class of the uh, you know, high, high school, school, yes, in Ploiești, where I was born. I was born in Ploiești. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but we knew, we knew, uh, we, we had to know, uh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 